Lo, lo, lo. All right. <clears throat> Peace, fam. It's your brother, cool. It's been some time since I've done one of these um, presentations, and the um, reason behind it is uh, I've been doing a lot of uh, footwork and getting a lot of experience and putting certain pieces together in terms of how to deal with certain situations and be able to move forward and focus on greater things. So the issue we'll be addressing today is the proper way to go about um, registering your vehicle, you're registering your automobile, utilizing your trust, also claiming your tax exemption as a Native American so that it's reflected in their system you know what I'm saying? So that if your plates are being scanned by any highway hire, it's in, it pops up as being Native American. All right, so this is how you deal with the whole um, traveling issues. So first place we're gonna, or first state we're gonna start with is Washington State, because that's where I'm located. That's where I'm domiciling in, uh, Washington State Republic. And um, so I'll just show you the process that me and my tribe went through. Um, in order to get this thing done. <clears throat> so all these forms have the same principle. All right, it's pretty self explanatory All right, you go through the basic information about your vehicle or your automobile. Now, register owner. For additional owners, each sheet with attached sheet with name, driver's license, ID, TIN, Tax identification number, EIN, employer identification number, or UBI number. The UBI number is what you get once you um, register your entity as a uh, foreign, um, as a foreign nonprofit corporation with the Secretary of State. Then you'd be assigned a UBI number, which would suffice as well. Expiration date and phone information. Washington primary. Address or Washington principal place of business, etc. etc. Mine, I want you to see here. I want to type the business. The type would be employer identification number. Here's where you'd put the EIN number, okay? Um, for me and my tribe particularly, we did it with our, uh, with our, um, we did it with our, uh, we did it with our um, foreign trust, which is um, called Sunel Shi Amaru Republic. That is the um, ecclesiastical body politic and corporate that we, we uh, is in alignment with the Morris Science Temple of America, 1928. All right, so pretty much we have our own um, identification number. We do commerce. We function um, as a tribe, you know what I'm saying? It's, um, also protected under the Religious Corporation Act. So just a you know just a pretty much a breakdown of how we're operating. See business employer identification number. This is the number we'll go here. Expiration date, phone number, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Registered owner name or business name. You get the drift. So who's the registered owner? Owner is the trust. Or if you have a tribe and you're building an umbrella, the owner of all the property of all your tribal members should be owned. Um, all the property of your tribal members should be gifted over to the um, gifted over to the tribe. Okay. So now, Washington primary residence address, if an indi individual or Washington principal place of business address, if a business. Okay. Mailing address of different than residence address. So mailing address would be the um, domestic mailing address here. Not a primary business. Okay.
okay, will be Morocco for our particular trust. You know what I'm saying? Wherever you set up your trust, it doesn't necessarily matter according to your articles of organization. All right. So according to the articles of organization, the jurisdiction or the principal place of business for that trust is um, the Magali Alaksa. So that would essentially be what I would like right here. I wouldn't normally do these forms online. I would just be, you know, in the office filling out these forms. I would write, you know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, Magali Alaksa slash Morocco. You know what I'm saying? Now, legal owner slash lien holder. Fill out if different than registered owner. For additional legal owner, lien holders, attach sheet with name, driver's license, and and address information. Out if different than registered. Okay. Let's see one in alignment. You don't have to do this twice. All right. And then you're supposed to document just simply stating that um it's a gift, or you can have the um being or individual or is currently registered underneath to go in with you. You know what I'm saying with their um uh registration and also their license or state ID, whatever they have, so that they can show proof that they are the current um, registered all gifting the property over to um, whatever the name of the entity is or the state, okay? You have a form that you the national who's representing that particular entity a particular state you need to make sure you have your national ID with you identify and have the um, taxes removed you know what I'm saying on the registration that way that's reflected in the system as the vehicle um, being tax exempt due to the fact it's Native American this is all the things that pop up in um, the system yeah Okay. I'm doing a video too, by the way. But I will. I'll call you. No. That's all right. Yeah, cool. Yeah, go to it. Right. So. All right, so this is how you properly, properly maneuver and, you know what I'm saying, get what you need to get done. So the registration should be in the name of your trust, which is a religious organization, Choctaw, Aboriginal Indigenous Organization. For those who like to use those words, I like to use the talk Talktaw. You know what I'm saying? And just know that the, the registered owner is also the legal owner, unless you decide to fill this part out if you don't read. The instructions and this is just for Washington State all right so we're gonna move on this right here is Arizona State okay see here it's pretty much the same what are you here for title and registration you know what I'm saying plate number VIN number etc etc here, you can put the lien amount of your vehicle. Whatever you feel the lien amount of your vehicle's worth. Lien holder. Service license and number. Now, if you're, um, and I'm speaking from an individual standpoint. If you're an individual, 
all right, and you have a domestic entity that's underneath a foreign entity, use that domestic entity as well, which can have uh, a two number. Okay, one of my entities is called one of my entities is called Cool Breed. All right, so this is who would be the registered owner slash lien holder. Okay. All right, owner, driver's license or EIN, same thing. I'm just letting you see that you have the option of utilizing a social security number or you have the option of utilizing an EIN number, okay, for your trust to register your car properly. And like I said, then you're supposed to um, request um, an excise waiver form for the taxes to remove the taxes. You got to show that you're a native. All right. Um, you got to make sure you bring your articles or organization with you so that you show that um, your, your tribe or your organization is set up as a religious um, organization, being that it's uh, native. So this right here is, what state is this? Yeah. So this is California. All right, this is the application for title or registration for California. So we went through Washington, we went through Arizona. Now we're in California. All right, same idea, same protocol, same principle. Now, now, owner information. Remember, once again, if you're if you already uh, own the car um, under your straw, or even if you are nationalized, if you own the car in your free national name, what you want to do is you want to register it through your trust. All right, so I'm showing you here owner information. All right, this would be the owner, true full name of owner, last first middle suffix, business name or less sort. All right, business name would be once again because I'd be registering it underneath my tribe. So this is how I would operate if I was in California. You know what I'm saying? ID card number. This is where the EIN number would go. The state. I would put, I would put Morocco for state, but that's just me. Legal owner, lien holder slash title holder slash title holder. You always want to make sure you make you, you have a lien holder. True full name of bank, finance company, or individual. Do not re-enter name of new registered owner above. Okay. So in this particular instance, that would mean that the information you should put here is your information. As a free national, being the lead, being the lien holder, or if the legal owner is the same as your company, then you're good to go. And you just function. Now, I don't live in California, so certain questions that I would have, I would actually have to go to the DOL office and just bump my head and give it a shot and gain information. All right. But 
essentially all these applications have room for an EIN for business to register your automobile underneath. This is New York. Name of primary registrant. Last, first, middle, or business name. The information. If the owner of the vehicle is different from the registrant, the owner must complete this section. If the owner of the vehicle is different. Right, and this is pretty self-explanatory. This is from New York State, so this is pretty simple. So once again, name of primary registrant, business name. If it looks repetitive, good. I'm showing you that it's the same principle across the board, no matter which state you're in. The wording might be a little different, but it's the same principle. This is a state of Florida, all right, Florida State. Owner's first name, full, middle, maiden name, last name. Florida driver's license or Federal employee, uh, federal employer identification number, forward slash suffix number. Now, just to make it clear, I'm gonna scroll down. Oh no, this is not for this one. So every state's documents is a little bit different. All right, so here is where your EIN number would go. If I was in Florida, this is how I would do it. Fill out the information for the uh, trust, mailing location, all that. Information about the vehicle, you can specify. Now here, use of um, use of vessel. This particular one, I would select exempt. Because it's a private vehicle. It's not being used for commercial purposes. It's exempt. question here are you a Florida resident as the owner nope are you an alien nope or as a matter of fact now that I'm thinking I would say it's a Florida resident because at the at the main point it's currently domicile in Florida Right, because we're talking about a business, we're not talking about people. So yes, it is. You know, then you just read, and then you see here it comes once again, lien holder. So you can see the language that's being used across the board here. Lien holder information. Federal employer um, identification number. This would be your EIN number, date of lien, lien holder's name. That would be the name of the trust, which that EIN number is attached to. Transfer type. If ownership has transferred, how and when was the vehicle, mobile home, or vessel acquired? Gift. There's no taxes on a gift. It's like a donation. So you're donating your property to your trust. So everything is a gift, not a sale gift okay and then you go from there continue reading fill out the information you need etc etc and just to be uh just to be clear pull up this part right here Enter the Florida driver's license number, Florida identification card number, or federal employer identification number of the owner and co-owner when applicable in the spaces provided on the application. 
A driver's license number is not required for vehicles not owned by a natural person. So do you see how they get us with the game? If you want to register the car under yourself, then you have to have state ID. You have to have a, a driver's license issued from the state. Now, if you're registering it in the name of your trust or your tribe or your business, which is all the same thing, then you don't need a license. What you need is a federal employer identification number, including proof of identity. So meaning if your trust is in your free national name, or if you're a member of that trust in your free as, as a free national, then you need to have self-identification that reflects that title so that they can see that everything lines up. Okay, you are a member of this. I can see your title here. And what documentation would they be looking at to verify? That would be your articles or organization. We'll pull that up in a second. But once again, all right, oh, and also including proof of identity for any individual signing as an authorized agent for a company slash business when applicable. They'll be the members of the group or the society. In a nutshell. Bam. Done with those things. Um, what was the next thing I'm going to pull up? Oh, right. Now, your trust instrument is important. Your trust instrument is what lays out how your trust is organized, how it functions, all right? Whenever you need to do things like, let's say, um, we'll open up an account or do any type of commercial transactions, you wanna have proof that your trust is real and that it is in existence. So, as y'all can see, this is Exhibit A. This is the filing for the Declaration of Organization of Ecclesiastical Moor Society. There's a filing number. Filed in King County. All right. Hmm. Grantors. Yeah, people. Okay. That's the name of the people involved with Sunel. Grantee. Sunel Shi Amaru Republic. Meaning the people are granting everything that they own to Sunel. Now, that's it for page one. Page two is the our authority all right this is what prophet Jurali filed in cook county in 1928 filing number 10105905 the hertz's revised statute so this is included in a document in our organization you see we'll move on to the next page Now, I'm going to read this real quick just so you can get an idea of um, how it functions. This state derives the authority from the Moorish Science Temple of America, founded by Prophet El Haj Sharif Abdul Ali, Noble Drew Ali in 1913, incorporated in 1928. When in the course of the events of man, it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with another and to assume among the powers of the earth, the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and of nature's God entitled them. A, de a decent respect to the opinions of man requires that they should declare the causes which impelled them to the separation. That was an excerpt from the Declaration of Independence. All right. 
We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their mothers with certain unalienable rights, which among these are life, security, freedom, social and economic stability, which equates to peace, Islam. Governments are instituted among men deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. That whenever any form of government becomes destructive to these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or to abolish it and to institute new government, laying its foundation on such principles and organizing its powers in such form as to them is more likely to affect their life, security, freedom, social, and economic stability. So now she, Amaru Republic, is an ecclesiastical Moorish society of the Tocton peoples of America, known by many ancient titles being Moabite, Moor, Moroccan, Asiatic, Olmec, Ancient American, Mer, Aztec, Maya, Iroquois, Algonquin, Montauk, Mohammedan, Taino, Hawak, Lenape, Cherokee, Seminole, Choctaw, Chickasaw, Creek, Original Mound Builders, Created on 419 uh, 419-2015. That's the date uh, we created to know. And by these articles in the ancestral estate of the Samal Maghrib Amexum, North America, geographical coordinates, South America, geographical coordinates, Central America, geographical coordinates. Because we're bringing our jurisdiction back into the land. You see what I'm saying? So your articles of organization lays out how your trust is organized, where it's organized, the jurisdiction, the laws it's governed by. So you literally have to write your laws into existence. Now, in this province today, Washington, a republic, the mission of Sunel Shi'amu Republic is to teach our people the ancient religion of our ancestors, Islam, I self law and master. Establish a way of living in harmony according to our ancestral customs and usages. Transfer conveyance to property in the name of Sunel Shi Amaru Republic, including all subordinate organizations of Sunel Shi Amaru Republic. Establishing a thriving and self sustaining economic community. Gain assets and secure wealth for the posterity of Neumfa, the people. All right, so this is all for our babies. So this is laying out what our mission is. Okay, which is also to continue on the great work of the prophet, which is to organize ourselves, save ourselves, because he brought everything we need to save the nation. Now we said, take it and save yourselves. So we got to save ourselves. So now she, Amaru Republic, is an ecclesiastical Moor society for Naum Fada people, the aboriginal heirs of the Murs, aka ancient she people, misnomered Almec. All right. All articles of this state and the constitution for Sunel Shi Amru Republic are incorporated as the foundational articles of this ecclesiastical Moorish society, including all additional amendments. So we, you know, we're working on our own constitution as well. It's not complete as yet. You know, constitution is not something you want to rush. So we're working on uh, lining up. That's what I'm trying to show you. Lining up with law. All right. Any other amendments to these articles can only be made by an appointed visor. So in our particular jurisdiction, a visor would be considered a beneficiary or a um or a protector. Meaning it can meaning the visor would be either a grantor, I mean a beneficiary or a trustee. Okay? That's what a visor is. So all members of um, our particular uh, jurisdiction are visors who are of the age of majority. Pursuant to the Articles of Confederation, pursuant to the Constitution for Sunel Shi Amma Republic, pursuant to the Treaty of Peace and Friendship, pursuant to the Zodiac Constitution, AA 222141, Library of Congress. Pursuant to the divine constitution and bylaws of the Moorish Science Temple of America. Line yourself up. This declaration is made under the penalties of the perjury and stands as a certification of the formation of this aboriginal American state as the matter of the law and of the fact. Okay. 
I, Noble Cool L, do affirm that at a meeting of the members of the Morris Science Temple of America, held at 771 914th Avenue Southwest in the County of Kings in Washington Province, and third day of June 2017, for that purpose, the following members are appointed advisors. According to the rules and usages of such, Mansa M. Bay, Ajay Bay, Rael Bay, Chikawa Bay, Alisi L., Rania Bay, Lissa Bay, Amara L., Leah Bay, Mansa K. Bay, Amir L., this is supposed to be Ali Bay. All right, but that's an amendment we can privately make. Caden Bay, El Hadik Bay, Caden Bay. I'm sorry, Caden uh, Bay, El Hadik Bay, Caden Bay, Ikramula Bay, Neil Bay, and Sunil Shiamu Republic, adopted as its corporate name, Sunil Shiamu Republic. Okay, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. This trust instrument was drafted on this date. You know what I'm saying? We have our own date. Second day, 11th cycle of the year, 1432. Gregorian calendar, June 3rd. We got it notarized. And I'll go back to the first photo. So you can see that. We got it filed. Okay. So we're in existence, we're operating, we're functioning as a tribe. All right. Now, on to the second phase of the course. Okay. So what we want to do now is lay out the game plan on how we're supposed to be functioning. All right. Okay. That should be pretty clear. So here we have the Treaty of Peace and Friendship between the United States and Morocco, 1787. Right. So here we have different jurisdictions. I mean, we're drawing the line. All right. There's a treaty in place, and there's two parties. There's two parties. One party is the United States of America, which was created in 1781 under the Articles of Confederation. Okay? March 1st, 1781 to be exact. Then you have the Moorish slash Moroccan Empire, which has no birth date. Okay? Now, going down the timeline, the United States came into existence in 1789, meaning the United States under the jurisdiction of... Um, uh, New England, meaning under the jurisdiction of General Washington, meaning not for the aboriginals. Okay, we created this for these people to do commerce. Okay, so we all fall under this in the sense that the Constitution. In Article 6 states that all treaties and engagements entered into before the adoption of this Constitution shall be as valid against the United States. Okay? So meaning that automatically the Constitution includes the treaty, which is what makes the Constitution valid. Okay? Because the United States can't exist without the Moors. The Moorish Empire was the first to recognize the United States via the treaty. So this, this authorizes them to function. And we agreed. Okay? So now, the United States under the appointed General George Washington in 1789, they adopted a constitution, which became the American Constitution in 1791. Alright? Which was an amendment to... The Articles of Confederation. All right, which was about eight years later, 1781 to 1789. Then you have the United States Corporation Company. This is where they started to go off keel. All right, the United States Corporation Company was um, established in 1925 in the state of Florida. Okay, as a um, uh, perpetual for-profit corporation company. So this is when the shell started to go bankrupt. So once this went bankrupt, this was the next shell. 
okay? And this is what everything's been operating on uh, since. United States Corporation Company. So now, we have corporate straits. Oh, and also I want to um, make you be aware that this includes the 50 organic states. Organic states meaning, for instance, Washington state is an organic state, right? According, which is still in alignment with the United States of America and Congress Assembly, according to the Article of Confederation. Now, the state of Washington falls under United States Corporation Company, okay? So now, you have the Moorish Empire, which has, no, which has no birth date. You have a flag that's been here for ever. The Moorish Science Temple of America was drafted in 1928, but the movement initially started in 1913 by Prophet Drew Ali, all right? 1926, it was a civics organization, went by the name of the Moorish Holy Temple of Science, and then 1928 is when it got reorganized under the Religious Corporation Act to protect the property of the members, okay? So that's what that was about, okay? So once that took place in 1928, we became up and running officially, all right? When the prophet passed in 29, the Vatican was also filed in Cook County under the same type of structure the prophet left behind in 1929, one year later. All right, there's no coincidence in that. So now you have the new generation. This is 2017. All right, you see here how you have like, um, Alabama, New York, Nevada, you know what I'm saying? Texas, just name a few of the states. These are all organic states. These are all republics. What makes them not republics is the state of Alabama, the state of New York, the state of Nevada, the state of Texas. But Alabama state, New York state, Nevada state, Texas state are all still republics. They haven't changed. Right, that's the illusion. Now, in our particular jurisdiction as the Choctaw peoples, we have a right to create our own institutions. So we're supposed to line up our institutions with, and I and I believe the only man who actually brought the game plan out of everyone who came, and that was the Prophet Drew Ali. Now I'm not saying to worship the man or do or or idolize him. What I'm saying is take what he what he gave us and build on it. Okay. So now. What is a foreign state? A foreign state is an entity. Okay? That would be a foreign entity. So Sun El Shi is a foreign state. Okay? Uh, the name of your trust is also considered a foreign state as long as you're under the jurisdiction of a foreign entity with a 9 8 number. If it is not, then it's domestic. And it's under this jurisdiction. I mean, not these guys, but it's under this jurisdiction. All right. Which is actually comprised in the, what we call, D.C., District of Columbia. All right. Now, if you look at Article 1, Section 8. Article 1, Section 8, Clause 17 of the Constitution, it breaks down the jurisdiction of this here, which is a, um, about 10, um, 10 miles radius square, all right? If you look at the Constitution, Article 1, Section 8, Clause 17, or Paragraph 17, okay? So soon enough being a foreign state in alignment with the Moorish Empire, we have treaties in place. So there's a process in place for us to operate. So I'm using this to, br to bring home the idea of traveling and how to travel properly and safely while not giving up your jurisdiction. Okay? So register your vehicles, yo. 
in the name of your trust or in the name of your tribe. Okay? Line yourself up with the law and execute. Because all the property, you got to do like how the Jews do. Because the Jews do what we used to do. Everything they own is gifted over to the synagogue. So the synagogue owns all of their property. It means they owns all the land, all the all the vehicles they have, all the cars. You know what I'm saying? Everything they own, the stores, all that's underneath the synagogue. So they're all members of that, so they get the benefit from the use of all that property. All right? So the same process I'm telling you, you don't think the Jews do this? You don't think the Muslim people do this? You don't think the Asian people do this? You don't think they register... You don't think they register in their cause underneath their own jurisdiction? For those who know, I'm not saying everyone knows this, but for those who know, this is how they're operating. And we need to get back on track. So this is how you Columbo the whole traveling issue in a nutshell. You register the car or your vehicle or your automobile in the name of your state, in the name of your trust. My particular instance so now she i'm a republic is named my tribe so that's the way the vehicle registered to and we had the taxes taken off right it's called the excise tax waiver so there's different reasons why you would get the excise tax waiver one of them would be if you're a military another one would be if you're um uh, non-resident. Another one would be if you're Native American. Because Native Americans can't be taxed. So if you're a Native American, you would want to show um, proof of uh, identification as a Native American, meaning your national ID. Then you'll want to bring your trust instrument to show that you are a member. If it's listed in your trust instrument that you are a member of this organization and that you can sign on behalf of it as a representative of the organization all right and then you get the taxes taken off I'll tell you right now uh, me and my tribe we went in there to register um, the, our first automobile all right and uh, and I'll tell you we started this, this journey on a Sunday and we didn't get it done till Wednesday all right so we were very persistent because we had to go come back you know miscommunication felt like um, the um, people that weren't being very helpful but you know we kind of had to express that we weren't we were feeling like our religion was being made um, fun of you know what I'm saying because um, she didn't recognize our documentation because we come in with our own documentation so she was a little bit confused but she got with it eventually you know what I'm saying so that being said you remove the excise tax forms due to the fact you're native then that gets noted in your registration as you're registering it's, it states that this vehicle was gifted to this truck to this tribe it's native um also you want to state that um i mean also it's going to state in the notes that the taxes were taken off due to the fact that it's native so meaning all that is being shown in the system so when a highway pirate is scanning plates, because you know they got the technology to scan plates. When you're scanning plates, this is what's popping up. This is the legal owner. And the legal owner had the taxes taken off because the legal owner is a native. So this is what we do. Own nothing, control everything. So now owns everything. We as the people control it. And that's how you need to function within your trust. And if you're going to build your trust on a larger scale, then you'll just make it a try and build your umbrella. But this is how we need to function. So no more do we need to keep going to court for these silly issues just because we don't got it down pat. Or we not really know, knowing how to move. You know what I'm saying? And you best believe you better know who you are. Um deeper than just the more. You need to know what tribe you're from because they will ask you, so what tribe is that? You know what I'm saying? Uh, we uh, responded and said that we are Moors. Okay? And um, they looked in their file and uh, they, they must have found something because they stopped asking us about it. You know what I'm saying? Pointed them in the MO and that was it. So, 
to be yourself and watch miracles happen. So that's how that process went. So, um, you know what I'm saying? The vehicle's registered to the tribe. So now when it pops up on the highwayman screen, it's popping up as Native American. So, the, so as soon as you see something like Native American, they're automatically thinking, not my jurisdiction. Okay? And this is how we avoid dealing with issues like that. So with that being said, that's all I wanted to speak on for that. Um, I got a few more videos coming in. So I hope this was very helpful and handy in terms of moving forward properly, right and exact. <coughs> <coughs> <clears throat> well, I'm your brother, cool. I love y'all, fam. Peace. We out.